This episode may contain graphic and exclusive content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello folks, the channel is Crime Night, I'm your host Joe Lewis and as it's customary, please allow me to welcome you and thank you for being with me here again today. I want to continue um, discussing Delphi and in particular the Richard Helen um, topic. We all know that Richard Helen has mysteriously appeared from the Matrix over these last few weeks, uh, undoubtedly from the evidence that's now become clear, Richard Allen wasn't known as an individual to any of the law enforcement uh, agencies that have in fact been uh, in allegedly investigating this criminal investigation because we know now through reports that have been released uh, in the media that Richard Allen was in fact a phantom that had disappeared in the matrix that was floating within the optical cables and the illusions that are the internet. And during yesterday's presentation, I began asking questions. I was asking questions if Richard Allen was unknown up until a few weeks ago when things developed rather quickly to try and get the man where he is today, behind bars, uh, according to what is known guilty until now proven innocent in a court of law because despite what what we want to believe that is in fact the case that um, things get twisted into such a manner that anybody that gets in fact arrested is guilty until proven innocent in a court of law not the wrong not the other way around or innocent until proven guilty in the court of law uh, a lot of the people from the kangaroo court of of public opinion have now passed judgment on the man uh, they've decided that the man is in fact guilty as charged guiltier than original sin and that he deserves to be where he is without a uh, proper counsel without proper representation in a court of law without uh, attorneys being permitted to defend his case inside that court of law and all of this is based on what the court or what the Kangaroo Court of Public Opinion believes to be reason enough or strong enough evidence or proof to declare that the man, Richard Allen, has in fact committed the act of murdering two little girls in the back of the woods in the city of Delphi in Carroll County in Indiana based on information that he, through his own volition, provided the authorities in the early days of the investigation, when he approached a CO officer, con conservation officer, and he told him that he had been at that location, and he told him that he was dressed in blue, with blue jeans, it were a blue jacket with blue jeans, and it's now come to be known five years later about this conversation, and now everybody in law enforcement has been chasing their tails, attempting to uh, cover up another bungled, part of this investigation which seems to be a continuing theme when we talk Delphi. So many things don't make sense pertaining the Delphi investigation. There's been so much hair, hot air blown by law enforcement officials, by Dark Carter, by the topmost onshows of their respective law enforcement agencies. Tob Lisenby has had a lot to say. Dark Carter has been a continued uh, face on our screens over these years, preaching the gospel of the ISP, preaching the gospel of the law enforcement fraternity on our dedicated and committed they are to getting to the bottom of this crime. Blah, 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 blah. And so it continues every time there's a media conference. Here we are on tenterhooks wanting to know 
is today the day that they're going to provide us with some concrete information pertaining further evidence they have at their disposal. They've had five years to release one piece of evidence which they've always neglected to release, which according to the affidavit has now been uh, highlighted because the affidavit has been released for public consumption, that one of the girls said gun. Do you reasonably and, and in your mind conclusively agree that by saying gun or by releasing Libby or Abby saying gun was going to prejudice the investigation in any way, shape or form? Because, folks, let's think about this logically. I mean, we're not, we, as I've maintained, we're not attempting to rebuild the pyramids that were built in Egypt 3,000 years ago. We're not attempting to reinvent the wheel. We're not attempting to reshape or reform the laws of physics here. We're not attempting to defy gravity. We're attempting to get to the bottom of who murdered two little girls. And do you honestly, in your mind, even if you are a law enforcement official or a current or past uh, attorney, were current or past member of law enforcement of, uh, uh, of, of the law enforcement fraternity? Can you can you honestly declare in your mind that by releasing just the word "gun" from one of the girls, that that was going to prejudice the investigation? When any person that sees that video that's been released by the Indiana State Police of girls walking on the bridge, and we see a man walking towards one of the girls, allegedly. I don't know, perhaps Libby filmed the man walking towards her. Don't you think and anybody in their right mind would have come to a conclusion that the likelihood that that individual used the gun to accost them and to corral them to a different location where perhaps they were in fact murdered or where he took them to another location where somebody else got hold of the girls and proceeded to do the dirty deed. There's still a lot that we don't know about this case. We know he was on the bridge, somebody was on the bridge, and we know the girls were found murdered somewhere else. But do you honestly believe that the majority of the public that has been investigated, or that has been researching and looking into this criminal matter hasn't come to some sort of conclusion already in their mind by applying logic, simple logic, that this is in fact what's happened, that the man used the gun to corral the girls to a different location, do you really believe that by releasing that bit of information that we were going to prejudice or that the investigation was going to be prejudiced in any way, shape or form? Because had they released Libyan Abbey saying, gun, we should have been able to, or they should have been able to, in the early days, as early as the 27th of March of the year 2017, when they brought in 24 FBI agents, 24, besides all the other law enforcement officials that were there, helping, providing a, a guide, providing their investigative prowess, their power, attempting to find who had in fact murdered these girls. Don't you think that if that is in fact the case, and according to Nicole Robertson, I think her name was the FBI agent that built or constructed that that um, document that was then subsequently given to Judge Fouts to be signed, that they could in fact search Mr. Ron Logan's property looking for a firearm because according to the topmost expert in that location, which was Nicole Robertson, she was brought in to do a job and her job was to try and find out, to provide insights on who she believed the man was that killed those two little girls. And if you go and read that document, she in unequivocally states that she believes that there's probable cause that indicates that shows that Ron Logan committed the act of murder. So where on earth was the information relating to a specific or to a firearm in that document that was released. Because at that moment, they hadn't thought about releasing the information to the public. 
They were more preoccupied about getting a search warrant. So if there was some sort of smoking gun at the crime scene, as it's alleged there was now through the affidavit of Richard Allen, why did they not include that in the first document? That the authorities, in conjunction with the FBI, constructed to provide a judge who is now no longer a judge because of being caught with a prostitute, I mean, th this case just stinks to eye heaven, folks, and sorry to say. It stinks to eye heaven. The amount of shit that is attached to this criminal investigation, it is so putrid. It is so vile. It is so deplorable. It is so depraved that it stinks to eye heaven. If you start from that day one and you walk forward towards where we are today, and you analyze the bullshit that's come out of the offices, the bullshit that's been reported, by the Indiana State Police, the acting on the stages. This whole thing is a fog, is a smoke screen that is being created by an apparatus that has been chasing their friggin' ass for five years because they had no idea who they were talking about. And I believe they still don't know because they know who they are. In, in, in matters of knowing, and that's where the corruption is in because they know the people that are involved. But now they're trying to provide the American public and the public and the worldwide public with an illusion, with this deception that they are invested, as they were from day one, in attempting to find who the killer was of these two little girls when the evidence is as crystal clear. And now, particularly with this, with this bullshit that's been released, that they, didn't have, they had no idea who Richard Allen was because he was lost in the vacuum that's known as the internet, floating about somewhere. This is perhaps the biggest smoking gun to me that shows me that they know who the, who the real perpetrators are, but they've been lying to the American public and they've been lying to the public worldwide pertaining their investigative methods, pertaining what they're alleged to have been doing for five years. And as I said, when you include all the other bullshit pieces that go along with this criminal investigation of bungled FBI USB keys and bungled FBI uh, corruption on the hard drives, and you start breaking that onion down and you start peeling it back, slowly but surely, by the time you get to the nucleus, by the core of the onion, you're going to know that it's putrid and it's rotten. And that's in fact what is happening here. So what I want to do now is I'm going to ask, or I'm going to provide you guys with some video graphics. I'm going to play a video of another criminal case from Indiana. Much the same as the case of Liberty German and Abigail Williams has been over the years. Liberty German and Abigail Williams was a double homicide of two children. And yesterday I provided you guys with five examples of our other children have in fact been killed, murdered in Indiana, and their cases have not received the importance or the dedication or the emphasis that the case of those two little girls has received in matters of law enforcement agencies' involvement attempting to decipher what in fact has occurred. So the question remains to be answered, why? Why such a concerted effort on Libby and Abby? What is laying beneath the, f the first, second or third layer of, of dirt that we don't know about? Hence, such a concerted effort to bring the top brass into this investigation of Libby and Abby. And yet all the other children haven't had the same thing happen to them. Cases that have happened before. Libby and Abby were murdered. A case that took, where the killer still at last today, that it took 21 years for the FBI to be called to come and investigate. And yet, those two little girls, God rest their soul, through no fault of their own, we have 24 FBI agents, folks. This is almost like 
when they were attempting to search for Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. It's almost in that vein. It's almost a concerted investigation of that magnitude that they were that they were attempting to search for a man that was mailing bombs through the mail system in the United States where he killed a few innocent people in all different California, all over the uh, US mainland. Because I've never seen, I've never heard of such involvement by the FBI in a case of two little girls that were found murdered. And now if, if that in itself doesn't provide you a lens to look into to show that something is innately wrong about this, that there's something lying there beneath the first, second or third layer of dirt that is corrupt, that is evil, then I don't know what will show you. So let's listen now to this other criminal uh, case that occurred in Indiana. We're going to watch a mother and a father and the detective talking to a reporter about the fact that her daughter too was murdered. Okay, she was a little bit older than uh, Liberty German and Abigail Williams, but regardless, it's still an, a, a, an act of homicide investigation that has not received, that has not received, that has not received the amount of law enforcement involvement like the case of Liberty German and Abigail Williams has received. Listen to it now, and I'll come back to my narration again. A college graduate shot to death, set on fire, and left behind an abandoned Indianapolis home. The murder of 20-year-old Melissa Runnels remains unsolved. More than four years have passed, and this morning her parents ask you to help them find their daughter's killer. Mike Runnels, Barbara Harvey, parents, and private detective Rick Farron, now working the case, um, join us here live to try to start getting more attention to this. Barbara, I want to start with you. It was more than four years ago you reached out to me and you sent me a message and those words really haunted me, saying, mother to mother, respect me, help me get justice for my little girl. I have a daughter. I can't imagine what your four years have been like. What do you want those watching right now to know? I want them to know that I know they're afraid to come forward if they've seen something. Um, let, them to know, let them know they should be more afraid if they don't say something because they could be the next victim. Their family, they could be in my shoes. And I don't want that for anyone. Um, I want the person or persons responsible off the streets. And um, she died a horrible death. Um, we didn't get to say, get to see her. She was unrecognizable. Um, so, do something. Say something. You want the violence to stop. Um, other cases have been solved. Those people um, need to be behind bars. They're animals. And uh, we don't need that in our society. Um, yeah, and she was worth mm. so much more. Mm. She had so much potential. She yeah. was only 20. Mike, um, as I watch you, I see your cheek, you know, twitching and, and your yeah. teeth inside. Can you let the viewers know why you're here today and why this was so important for you to say, I need you to hear me? Right. I mean, it seems like this has become the new normal now. Um, kids shooting kids and... I don't know, it's... I'm here to bring this back into the news. It's been way too long. It's been four years. Um, I want us to be able to put this behind us, you know, get the court system out of the way and do what we can to, to heal because we haven't been able to heal yet. Yeah. We need somebody to say something. I don't care how small it is, minute it is. We just want somebody to say something. Rick, where does the investigation stand? I mean, they've hired a, you know, a private detective trying to to find that little nugget that's going to get someone arrested. It, are there suspects? Are there things that you know that maybe the police know that we just haven't been told? Well, we don't, we don't know exactly what they know. Uh, we're still waiting on that cooperation, that bridge between us and IMPD, who's working the case. Um, we've interviewed associates and friends of Melissa uh, over the past several months, and we're just waiting for that one, that one thing to drop, the, the one detail, the one, you know, 
small or not, you know, just the one detail we could find to kind of help break this open. Somebody saw something, somebody heard something, you know, and they may be afraid to come forward. And we're just trying to get through that to say it's okay to come forward, it's okay to get us this information so we can keep you know, put this case, you get this case closed. Crime Stoppers is a great way to do that. I mean, Absolutely. it can be, I mean, solidly 100% can remain anonymous. Before we run out of time, any of you three, can you run down like the exact location where she was last seen or heard from and, and where that piece of evidence may, may lie? Um, she was on the west side of Indianapolis. Um, someone had drove her that way um, around 10th and Tibbs area. Um, they dropped her off at a house and waited for her to come back and 20 minutes later she still hadn't come back and so they, they left. So we don't know anything else from there. We know her time of death was shortly after that. Um, I received a message from her friend um, around 7.32 p.m. that evening saying that um, she was going to die and she loved me so much and tell my mom I'm sorry for the way I lived my life and those are the last words that I have from her so that's all we have so far the, the sad thing about this is, is this neighborhood this happened in they didn't call the police or 911 on the gunshots mm -hmm. but yet four or five hours later they called the police because there was a fire something's wrong here Thank you, Thank you for sharing your heart and your beautiful daughter and we're hoping that this can somehow, her face, someone will remember, someone will speak out and call um, and I'm just really sorry. I appreciate you Thank having you. us on today. It is 845 and again there's more information, 262 tips, you can call r, &R Investigative Services in Brownsburg, we'll link you to them, there's also a GoFundMe to help pay for some of, you know, trying to find her um, killers, fox59.com slash Angela Answers, all of that will be there for you. How can anybody that has watched what you've just watched not feel for the family and believe that they've been let down by the authorities regarding the brutal murder of their daughter? How can anybody not feel that? How can anybody trust the system regarding criminal investigations and how can Dark Carter honestly look anybody in the eye knowing the amount of dedication the amount of favor that is given the case of Liberty and Abbey and yet is neglected every single other young child victim adult the dedication that their case deserves just like the case of Liberty and Abbey deserve how can he come and try and preach a different gospel than what I've just given here you guys now where he and his department and all other law enforcement departments have spent five years dedicated committed allegedly investigating the case of Liberty and Abbey and they've failed every other victim who they not given the same amount of concerted effort toward investigating who has murdered these other children or young adults or adolescents or teenagers or whoever they may be so what kind of answer is Dark Carter going to have for that what kind of answer is Dark Carter going to have since he's the most top on show in the state of Indiana when somebody asks him why have you concentrated why have you in the FBI and the Indiana and the Carroll County and blah 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 all these other law enforcement agencies why have you people spent so much time so much money so much dedication into solving one case of two little girls and what about all the other victors do they not merit the same amount of dedication that you've shown those two little girls why are you profiling people depending on their race depending on who they are depending on their geographical profile of where they live is this what that cutter is all about questions have to be asked of him because is this above that cutter you've got to go to the governor 
And Dark Card is the one that says, look at me. I'm looking at him now. Now I'm, now I'm directing Dark Kara all heartedly when I see the amount of sadness, the amount of pain that we have a family that has waited four years to find out answers on who murdered their daughter, brutally murdered, and yet where is the level of involvement? Where is the level of empathy? Where is the level of compassion? that you, Dark Carter, say you have towards victims of crime when you've neglected to provide this family who's had to hire a private investigator. So this is something else you need to start looking at the case, folks. Our thing's different. Our things differ from case to case. Now, this family took it upon themselves to hire a, 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 a private investigator to help find who the killer is that murdered their child because the authorities just don't seem to be too motivated in wanting to know. And yet, in matters regarding Delphi, by golly, the only person that wasn't searching there was the President of the United States or members of his Secret Service or highly trained agents from the FBI, that, uh, from the CIA that they might have brought from overseas for, from deployment in, in, in Iraq or Afghanistan to come and help search because everybody else was there. Everyone, every Tom, Dick and Harry and his cat and his badge was searching or was investigating Liberty German and Abigail Williams when there are thousands upon thousands of cases in Indiana that deserve and merit the same amount of dedication and these victims ain't getting it. And Dark Carter's in charge. Dark Carter needs to answer, folks. You people in the United States need, need to ask the questions. Why are they choosing, picking and choosing who they dedicate attention to? You need to ask. I gave you guys examples yesterday. The majority of them were African-American children that were murdered. So why are their families not receiving the same amount of concerted effort that the families of those two little girls in Delphi are receiving? Why, have they, why are they being left behind in the bullshit that is known as law enforcement, in the bullshit that is known as government, in the bullshit that is known as the temple? Why are they being left behind? Why are victims like this young lady Why is she being left behind? Why is she being forgotten? Why are they not putting the same amount of effort into these victims as well as what they did to Liberty German and Abigail Williams? And this is what I'm saying, folks. What is it about that case that demanded this from law enforcement? What is it, folks? There has to be, it, it, it has to stink. You have to think about it. It has to stink, folks. There's something there that they don't want you and I to know about. And there's not a single attorney who may know about this, who may, you know, if it reaches his ears, and I've asked and I've pled, that there's got to be an attorney that can do something about it. But they're all shit scared. At the end of the day, these people are, are, are gutless, they're cowards, they talk about on, on they talk about things on YouTube, but at, at, when it, when it comes to the nitty gritty of putting the 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 pedal the foot to the pedal, they'll just no, they don't want to do anything about it because they're too shit scared. And a lot of them will know that there's a cover up going up, that there's corruption going up. As I said to you, I watched a highly decorated FBI agent talking to uh, somebody on YouTube. And I, and I was asking, I could sense the woman wanted to <laughs> verbalize cover-up. I was sitting here saying to her, just say the damn word, lady. Just say you know this corruption and a cover-up. Because that's where she was going. But she wouldn't, you see. Because at, ultimately, she's part of the temple. So she doesn't want to believe, or she doesn't want to have to temple believe, that she knows that there's a cover-up in place. Because these people, they look up, this is a huge brotherhood. And whilst it's a huge brotherhood, they get away with murder. Literally, they get away with murder. They get away with legalized serial killing, as I've given you guys examples. But I'm going to now play some clips of Dark Carter, and I'm going to ask some questions. So let's watch those now. To the killer, who may be in this room, we believe you are hiding in plain sight 
Really, Doug? Hiding in plain sight, according to what you've just said here now. I believe I'm your biggest critic, Doug. And your narrative and your theatrics, to me, and this is Joe speaking, seem to swarm around you like flies over a hot pile of shit. Because how can you say somebody's been hiding in plain sight? Perhaps you mean he was hiding in plain sight because he was lost in the matrix. Is that what you mean, Doug? Because if you're addressing Richard Allen here, Richard Allen wasn't known to you when you were on that podium doing your little theatrical performance. Richard Allen was lost in the system, in the computer system, in what is known as the World Wide Web, floating somewhere. God knows where he was floating. Is that what you mean he was hiding in plain sight? Let's continue. For more than two years, you never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. And what would that investigative strategy be, Doug? Who are you talking about since you had no idea that Richard Allen existed? He was there in Delphi, but you and your onchos, you and your friends in law enforcement had no idea that Richard Allen, the man that's arrested today, sitting in jail on a fel felony to charge for the murder of Liberty German and Abigail Williams, existed. So what is this investigative strategy that you're talking about, that you moved to a different investigative strategy? What investigative strategy, and, and who does that investigative strategy pertain to? Are you trying to say that your investigative strategy was to try and find or to try and dig up Richard Allen that was lost in the Matrix? I think you need to explain a little bit further to the general public what you mean with all these public addresses you've done over the years because Richard Allen has now shown me a side of your investigation and the side of your narrative and your rhetoric and your presentation and your theatrical performances that is in fact disingenuous and it may in fact all be a lie that's been created by a law enforcement system that has got no bloody idea what on earth they are doing. And if they do know what they are doing, perhaps you're hiding the corruption and the evil that lies within. Let's continue going. We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you. We know that this is about power to you. And once again, you're wrong, Doug. When you say we likely have interviewed you well let me refresh the memory of everybody who may be watching this video today who may be paying attention and who knows what has happened over these last few weeks richard allen approached out of his own volition a ceo officer outside a store in delphi and he told the ceo officer that he had been on the bridge at that location that day so there was no interviewing so what are you talking about, Doug? The CIA officer then took the information to the FBI agents or to the public citizen that was working on behalf of the FBI, and that information was entered onto, your, onto the system. And this then, because your investigative prowess and the powers of law enforcement that have been following this investigation, five or more law enforcement agencies, Richard Allen, the man who is in jail today, charged with a felony to murder charge on, 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 for, for the murder of Liberty German and Abigail Williams, found himself floating in the matrix, in the system, because you had no idea that he existed. And what power are you talking about, Doug? What power could a man that worked at, at, at the CVS pharmacy, a father of one girl, I'm led to believe, and her husband, what power could this... What power are you attempting to say that this is about power to him? Because we've only got Richard Allen, Doug. So what power are you talking about in directing it, if you were in fact directing it, at a man that you had no idea existed? So who are you addressing here, Doug? Let's continue. And you want to know what we know. And one day, 
you will. You know what Richard Allen knows, Doug, and the rest of the world know? That everything you spoke up on this podium that day is an adulterated bullshit. That it makes no sense. And even Richard Allen knows that what you're saying is crap. Complete and utter crap. Because you did not know that Richard Allen existed when you're sitting up there performing the way you did. Almost like you doing some type of rehearsal to act in one of the Quentin Tarantino or Oliver Stone movies. As I said, Doug, I'm one of your biggest critics because I don't trust you, Doug. You come across as a very untrustworthy person. And I thank God that this thing has actually happened with Richard Allen because this is showing those that can see the picture clearly in front of their eyes the kind of tripe and the kind of crap that you and that man that's to your left, Toby isn't by, with his rosy red little cheeks, the kind of crap you people have been promoting the American public and the worldwide public as a whole. It's nothing but bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. And only the blind idiots cannot seem to see it or understand it. We are confident that you have told someone what you have done. Or at the very least, they know because of how different you are since the murders. Richard Allen did tell somebody what he had done, Doug. He went and told one of, one of your CO officers, out of his own volition, don't forget that, Doug, he provided this information out of his own volition. Nobody forced him to go and talk to anybody. He went and told the CO officer that he was at the bridge that day. As were a number of other people there. So it's not by this stroke of luck that Richard Allen entered the scene or the stroke of unbelievable investigative prowess on behalf of, on behalf of the ISP and the FBI and all the other law enforcement agencies, including the US, uh, uh, US Marshals and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Richard Allen, in fact, provided you guys with the information. So once again, Doug, you was lost in the matrix. And if it's not Richard Allen you're talking about, who is it that you're talking about, Doug? Who, in fact, are you addressing since you've only got one man in jail today for the murder? And it's taken five years to get him there. I'd love to hear your explanations on this. Let's continue. Welcome back at 641. Indiana State Police will not hold a news conference today on the three-year anniversary of the Delphi double homicides. That's different from the previous two years. So where is the investigation now, and is this a cold case? We took those questions directly to the state's top cop. But uh, we're still as energized now as we were the day after. No one questions Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter's passion to solve the Delphi double homicide case. Well, being his biggest critic, I question his passion to solve the Delphi murder investigation case. Because everything I've listened to and everything I heard, particularly now, knowing what I know about Richard Allen, it's all been disingenuous. And it's all been built on the pretense that they were doing such a great job investigating this criminal investigation, when in fact they've just been completely and utterly caught with their pants down because they had no idea that Mr. Richard Allen, a man that provided them information regarding where he was that day, in fact existed. So I question his, his passion. I question his integrity. I question his philosophy. I question his dedication to other cases that are still unsolved today in Delphi that pertain little children also. Why, as the, the Libyan Abbey case demanded so much attention and all the other children have not? So I question his passion. His passion, I believe, is disingenuous and it's, it shows me a side of the man 
that I just do not utterly trust. Let's continue. Every time he talks about it, you can see it in his eyes. It's easy to throw around the, the, the cold case idea. Nah, we're not even close to that. Three years after the homicides, police are continuing to keep what they know close. We asked, but Carter couldn't answer. What we know is what we know, and we're not ready to talk about that yet. How what you know is that you know nothing, Doug. That's what you know. Because when this reporter asked you the question, you had no idea that Richard Allen existed. So what do you know? You know how to be a good performer in front of the public, in front of the cameras, on a podium. That's what you know, Doug. Because you're a great performer. And all the while, for five years, you have been deceiving. Remember the word deceiving, folks. You have been deceiving the American public and the public throughout the world regarding what you allege is going on and what you don't want to share and what you're going to keep uh, uh, close to your vest because you don't want to prejudice the investigation. Where was Richard Allen, Doug? Where was Richard Allen, Doug? He was floating, Doug, in the Matrix. You didn't know he existed. So where's your narrative now? Where's your rhetoric now? Where's it heading? Can we trust it? I can't trust it. I'm sorry. Let's continue closer are you right now to getting this solved? One piece away. One piece away. Eventually somebody's going to do the right thing. Might be the killer himself. Might be somebody that knows who he is. And right there you've just answered the question yourself that you had no idea who he was when you said it might be the killer himself. There you just answered that you had no idea that Richard Allen existed. And that shows that everything you've been saying is disingenuous, is built on fog it's built on bullshit more bullshit and utter bullshit and you are extremely you are an expert you are part of that group of law enforcement officials that is an expert at promoting that narrative that the public want to hear because it's built on lies and as i said earlier your lies and your theatrical performance swarm around you like flies over a hot pile of shit Let's continue. Investigators still work full time on the case from the Delphi City Building. The ISP Laboratory Division, Intelligence Team, and Fusion Center are still combing through the now 50,000 tips. When we're done with all we have, we start over. Again, I think I got 18 tips yesterday. Just me, here at my desk. It's easy to be our own detectives and criticize the actual ones. But Carter says they accept that pressure. And I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of them. We can't talk about what we think. Everybody else can or what they believe happened we can't you proud of them doug you proud of the fact that the amount of law enforcement personnel you had investigating a case that surpasses any other team that's ever been assembled amassed in any other criminal investigation in the state of indiana Nothing has ever been as big as this regarding a double homicide of two little children. And you're proud of that type of bullshit that was able to lose the name of Richard Allen in the system. That's the kind of people you're proud of, Doug. My golly, your standards are pretty poor, mate. If you can be proud of that. I don't know what type of standards you, you adhere to as, a, as the top most personality in the police force, being the Indiana State Superintendent, and you're proud of your team. A team that had the evidence or had the narrative that a man had approached one of your officers to tell them that he had been at, at the scene and a clerical error. It, it all comes down to a clerical error now. And of course, you're going to put up your hand in the air. And like Tubbly and by, say, oh, you know, we are human. We make mistakes. And then I'm going to throw the question at you as I've thrown the question at Tubbly and by. Is that what you would say if it was one of your loved ones, your daughter, your niece, laying where Libby and Abby were? Would you also use that same narrative that you 
make mistakes. If it were one of them girls laying there with those two little girls, were? I don't think so, Doug. And that's where, and this is where the hypocrisy and the bullshit that surrounds you comes into play. Let's continue. There's been some criticism of me, and I'm, I'm willing to take that. I, I can't explain all the things that I know. That's because only police and the killer know. He has no idea what we know. Yes, there is criticism of you, and I'm your biggest critic. I'm your biggest critic. And what you say you know about him, you know nothing about him because he, you didn't know he existed. So what are you talking about, Doug? Because if you've arrested one, you should have by now arrested the others. So what are you talking about, Doug? That he wants to know what you know. You didn't know jack shit that Richard Allen existed. So why, where is your narrative? Where, is you, where are you heading with this bullshit that you're talking up on camera? That you've now just finally, once and for all, been caught with your pants down. Something that I've been saying for five years, that everything about this investigation is stinks to high heaven and everything you've promoted is bullshit, after bullshit and more bullshit. And if those that are listening in cannot see this for what it is, he's answering his own questions here. He's answering what you guys need to hear pertaining not knowing that Richard Allen existed and it shows you that if they were doing a stellar job, as they allege they are, that he's so proud of his officers, where are the other people that now is alleged were linked to Richard Allen? And why has Richard Allen been the only one that's taken the fall here? Where's everybody else, folks? So do you truly and honestly believe that this man that you've just heard now saying what he just said here now in this, in this, in this clip, that he's doing a great favor to the cause of the Justice for Liberty, German and Abigail Williams? You need to answer that honestly. Let's continue. Um, but one day he will. This is a different type of case because police have almost everything they need. I can't think of a time in my entire career or in, in many other careers that we have the, the, the voice of the person we believe is the killer, a photograph of who we believe is connected to the, to the murders, and even a, a, a snippet of how he moves. Carter says more information could be released in the future, but for now, this is what we're getting, and he thinks it's enough. Somebody knows. He cautions you to remember the two sketches are not photographs. I believe that eventually we're going to be able to say, this person's the killer, and there's a combination of those two images that'll land on his face, whatever that might look like. Carter, this is one of his priorities in life. Even if it takes another year, He's going to get this solved. If, if we hit year four, I hope we're sitting here again. But we will do everything within our power and within the parameters of law to find the individual that did this to Abby and Libby. In a nutshell, what I heard here today and what I presented to you guys here today are the words and the narrative of a man that is the topmost personality in matters of law enforcement in the state of Indiana, a man that is just below the Governor Holcomb, a man who undoubtedly has big political influence and influence within the state of Indiana, a man that is well versed in providing the public the narrative that he believes will have the gullible and the incredulous understand and trust what he's telling them a man who has done everything in his power to seem like the great team of law enforcement officials that have gathered together over these last five years that were on the case from the onset within the first 48 hours which are the most critical of any criminal investigation where they had 24 fbi agents Countless numbers of detectives, of, of, of law enforcement officials investigating a case of this magnitude that has surpassed any other double homicide of any other child that has succumbed to the hands of evil in the state of Indiana. And I hear a man praise, not only today, at numerous times I've heard this man praise the efforts of his team when in fact it's all been a big 
bowl of vomit and of tripe. Because, I'm going to say it again, and I'll continue hitting the nail on the head. This law enforcement team that was gathered as one big unit had no idea that Richard Allen existed as of a few weeks ago. And how quickly they were able, how quickly, folks, think about this. If they didn't know the man existed, how quickly they were able to build an affidavit built entirely on circumstantial evidence because that's what that affidavit is. If you want to believe it, if you don't want to believe it, that's your opinion. There is nothing solid. There is no smoking gun in the affidavit that can prove conclusively in a court of law without the reasonable doubt that Richard Allen murdered those girls. Nothing. And we've had this man, this great performer like uh, Freddie Mercury, Freddie Mercury's song. Oh, yeah. I'm the great pretender. So, you decide how you're going to think about this man in the future now. Particularly, as we get a refresher of what he said in the past, leading up to what's just, in fact, occurred now over these last few weeks. Now you can hear the narrative of the, of the man, knowing what we know pertaining to the man. The only man they have in custody or arrested today on the felony two charge for the homicide of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. And you're telling me that this is the best. That a law enforcement of the magnitude of all the agencies that gather together, this is the best that they can do. Where they are playing... At the moment, with the life of a man, using circumstantial evidence that Nick McClellan, the prosecutor, signed the affidavit that the man you just heard here now, Dark Card, had to put his signature on. To have a man linking him to a case, to a criminal scene, to a scene of a crime, by an unspent round from a cartridge, where there's no DNA positively linking him to the crime scene. They have DNA, according to Toby Lisenby. I've spoken about this, and I showed you where Toby Lisenby told Barbara McDonald that they have DNA. So where's the DNA that conclusively proves that Mr. Richard Allen's DNA was on the crime scene? Or where's the DNA that conclusively proves that Mr. Ron Logan's DNA was on the crime scene? Where is it, folks? They, 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 they trusting. They trusting the putrid, weak, piss weak, unspent bullet to be the smoking gun that they're hoping is going to tie Mr. Richard Allen to the murder of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. That's what they are relying on. And everything you've heard over these last five years from this man, as I exemplified here today, during this presentation, is complete and utter tripe. And this man should come publicly and apologize to the public of the United States of America and the public of the world for the way that he's behaved, the way that he's acted, the way that he's presented his narrative. Because if they've got one and they believe there are more, where are the others? Because now it is, they're, they're going to start spinning another story now, you see. This is what I said. This is why I want you guys to watch that video that I have of Las Vegas. Now, the Las Vegas Police Department has created the biggest miscarriages of justice and continue doing so and now they get away with it because these guys are trained actors they are trained in their evil practices folks don't let them swindle you don't let that deception play in your brain be alert be wise see the evidence for what it is don't be gullible, naive human beings. Wake up to your fact. Rely on what I said to you yesterday. Knowledge is the most powerful tool you're ever going to have in this world going forward. Because without knowledge, without training your brain, 
without feeding your brain with the information it, it yearns for, you're going to be like donkeys. That you're going to be led like sheep. And some of you, unfortunately, are led like sheep. Because you're not prepared to think for yourself. You're not prepared to have a thought experiment. You're not prepared to break a problem down, to see the problem for what it is. You just accept what these people in high positions of power tell you and what they feed you because you think they are the most honest in people with the most highest levels of integrity that they are. In meantime, in 90% of these cases, these people are false, they are evil, they are bad, they are putrid, they are depraved, and any other adjective or verb that you may think of that applies to them. I learned my lesson many years ago, folks. Many years ago I learned my lesson. So I'm wide awake to the fact of what's going on. And I've been wide awake of what is going on with the case of Liberty German and Abigail Williams from the moment that I began researching, from the moment that I questioned why so many law enforcement agencies were involved in this double homicide because it stinks to eye heaven. I've never seen an homicide of two little girls have the amount of law enforcement involvement as this case had. So you have to ask why. It's important, particularly when I've exemplified and I've provided examples of numerous other cases of homicides involving children in the state of Indiana that Dark Carter is under the command of, that Dark Carter is in charge of, that have never ever had not even a tenth of the amount of law enforcement involvement as the case of Liberty German and Abigail Williams has had over these years. And this is the best they can do, folks. This is the best Dark Carter can do. The bullshit that you just heard promoted here now. Where are we heading as a society? Where are we heading as a populace when we're supposed to trust these individuals and all they do is feed us garbage and more garbage and utter garbage? And they can do with us as they please. They can play that dirty, evil game of chess with our lives and ultimately, in their halls of justice, in their courtrooms, they decide... And in their offices, they decide who lives and who dies. They decide, folks. Not the law. Because at times, when that law enters that courtroom, it's deplorable, and it's evil, and it's corrupt. And they know it. They are umpteen, thousands upon thousands of cases that you can research that it's built on lie after lie after lie and innocent loving people with families, with children have died, are on death row today are in jail for the rest of their lives because the system that we trust the system that we hope will pass the right truthful justice to a human being has failed society has failed that man has failed his family has failed his friends because of the corruption and the evil that lays within I rest my case. I'll talk to you all again soon. Goodbye.